everyone, it's Holly, and today's video is all about the IBSL chemistry course. So this is my last video in my series of videos giving you guys tips on how to succeed in your IB courses. I'm not going to be making a video for IBSL French just because I'm going to be making lots of videos in the future in French. I've made lots in the past with my French exchange and my immersion program in Quebec. So yeah, if you need any tips on how to learn French, I definitely have videos on that. I wouldn't say that the SL French course really taught me French. Um, since I knew a lot of it beforehand, and it's not a really a course focused on grammar. So anyway, there's not going to be a video for SL French, but I have videos for all my other subjects on this channel, so be sure to check those out. And let's just get into the tips for IB Chemistry. So the first tip is to work hard and to do as much of your homework as you can. And especially, I know for my chemistry class, we had a lot of homework, and a lot of times I was not able to finish it. But something that I learned was that it's best to do every other question versus doing the first questions because the first questions are often of a similar style if you do them in order and they get harder progressively depending on what type of homework you're doing. But if you do every other question you can kind of get a taste of what the different styles of questions are and how you can do you know well in different types of questions and then you can form questions based on those different types of questions versus if you just on the beginning questions you wouldn't have been exposed to the ones that were at the end. So yeah, I would suggest, same as how I said in my IBSL math video, try to do every other question from your homework, and then of course if you can, go back and do more, because chemistry and math especially are really courses where it just takes a lot of practice in order to become proficient, so you just need to do it over and over and over again until you feel like you're hitting your head with the content in order to just get it stuck in there make sure that you have it in your head because these kinds of things can really enter into your long-term memory. By the time I got to my chemistry exam, like stoichiometry, periodicity, those things were just in my brain. I wasn't really like thinking about them because I had just memorized them or something. They were just really there as long-term knowledge versus short-term. My second tip is again pretty generic and this is to make notes and ask questions. I also have for this video in the description box there's a link to a Google Drive folder with all of my SL Chemistry notes in case you want some help or some inspiration. Of course there could be mistakes and this is not the only way to make notes, it's just for inspiration and to show you what you could do or if you need help with a specific topic you can check it out. But also always make sure you ask questions with your teachers, with your friends, because there are definitely mistakes in my notes, you make mistakes, I make mistakes, we're all human. Um, so my first notes I made in these books here, I made kind of like in-depth notes when I was learning the content, and then I kind of made these condensed notes, which are just kind of one sheets that I wrote out that show all the different content in a more concise manner. And then finally, ultimately, what I did was I made this SL chemistry summary and this was this was just everything for me. This was pretty much the only thing I studied once I got to the final exam. I wasn't reading over my long notes anymore. There were definitely times when I read over my notes completely. I read over everything, but these it was a page or a couple pages for each unit and it just goes on and on. So if you're just going to check out one note that I made, I would really suggest this full summary for the SL chemistry course. It's only I think 16 pages long. Ah, oh my god, I just kicked my desk. Okay, it's only about 16 pages long and I'm glad I never have to read this over again because nearing the exam I would read it aloud and highlight things and ask questions about it, blah blah blah. Not interested in doing that anymore, but it is a very very useful resource if you're interested. I found it very helpful, I liked sharing it with my friends, and I hope you guys will find it useful too. My next piece of advice is to aim for understanding and proficiency rather than just memorization. Of course for things like organic chemistry there is definitely some memorization involved, especially at first, and then you get to the understanding when you can use the things you memorized to do questions. But for the most part, it's really a lot of understanding, especially for the math parts. You have to understand what you're dealing with. It's not just a formula that you follow. For some things, it is very formulaic, depending on the question, but they can also ask you other questions. So if you have that deeper understanding of the content and you understand how the experiment works, instead of just the math that goes along with it, then you can understand why you're doing what you're doing and that makes it a lot easier and also more interesting. I'd rather fully understand it, ask questions, watch videos, all that type of stuff. So get at it, understand rather than memorize. 
the next thing that you want to do is to always look at the syllabus. The syllabus is your best friend because it has everything that you need to know and everything that Abby could ask you on the exam. So for every unit, go to the syllabus, read it through and see if there are things that you don't know. If so, then highlight those things and go over them. And that can really be how you structure your notes as well. There were specific notes I made where I typed my note and I wrote out the understanding from the syllabus and then I specifically wrote down the information that pertained to that specific syllabus point. So that can be a useful way to make your notes if you're interested in doing that, but otherwise I would just really suggest looking at the syllabus at least just to make sure you know what you're supposed to know. And then my next tip is don't give up. Even if you have to cry, it is definitely okay to cry sometimes. In fact, if you're crying about it, it means that you care about it. I mean, let's not go overboard. We shouldn't be crying every single day about chemistry, although I may have. But anyway, um, it's okay sometimes if you have no idea what you're doing or you're just really frustrated and you start crying. I am definitely that kind of person. So for chemistry and math especially, I would sometimes end up like that. Don't be ashamed of crying. It's not a bad thing. It means you care about what you're doing and you want to put in the work to do better. And if you cry about something and you don't know what you're doing and then you get better, it makes it that much more satisfying and it makes you feel that much more proud of yourself because you know you put in the work from something that was really, really, really frustrating and hard for you at the beginning. And my last point is about the IA. I have a whole video about the IA or about IAs in general, which is above, so you can check that out. But specifically in regards to the chemistry IA, I would say to choose a topic that is fun and interesting. Fun and interesting with chemistry may seem like an oxymoron, but trust me, that does not have to be the case. I did my chemistry IA on melting chocolate. So I looked at different melting points of chocolate um, for different types of chocolate, all 70%, and then I compared how they melted and talked about global things like transporting chocolate and the environment, blah, blah, blah. So I got to deal with chocolate. I got to eat the excess chocolate, obviously not the ones that were used in the lab or in the beakers, that would be gross and not safe. So please don't do that. But yeah, I got to melt a bunch of chocolate and then I just got to research the chemical structures of chocolate. So if there's something you really like and you feel like there's chemistry in it, cause honestly, chemistry is all around us. Chemistry is you, chemistry is me. Now I sound like Bill Nye or something. Anyway, um, so choose something that sounds actually genuinely interesting. Um, I mean, hydrogen peroxide or like some random chemical might be interesting to you, but if you look up online, you know, chemistry IA ideas, don't do any of them, I would suggest. Of course, you can, but if you do one of like the top 10 chemistry IA ideas that examiners see over and over and over again, it's just going to be a lot harder to score well on the personal engagement aspect, and if you choose something that you're genuinely interested in and will maybe add a little bit of value to your life, it makes it all the better and it makes you not want to cry about it. I definitely had problems with my chemistry IA, and of course, I didn't necessarily come up with a full conclusion to, like, this is the answer, but the fact that you fail or the fact that you have more questions is actually a good thing and in your chemistry IA you can explore why you failed or why you still have questions or what could be explored further or different things that you controlled and different sources of error. That's actually pretty much the entire chemistry IA is just talking about what you did, why you did it, what went wrong, what you could have done, all that type of stuff. It's not really about the complexity of it. Of course you want it to be complex enough but Really, I think the people that scored well, at least in my class, were the people that were able to write well, were able to analyze well, were able to talk about their successes and failures. That would definitely be a good tip. And also format is important, so always pay attention to that because if it looks professional, it's well done. That's the type of thing you can check over and it's kind of stupid not to because it's so easy just to make the margins nice, to make the font nice, to make sure your diagram fits on the page, to make sure it's labeled and all that type of stuff. Okay. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it helped you. I am not taking chemistry anymore. Thank goodness. I actually really enjoyed chemistry, but it was definitely my hardest class. I'm going to be taking lots more history and English courses as I move into the future. Of course, I would not be against taking another chemistry course. I enjoyed it immensely in some regards, others not so much. Um, but I felt just such an immense sense of pride after finishing those exams. Almost out of any of my exams, my chemistry ones were the ones I was most proud of. So I got a 7 in the SL chemistry course, and honestly, going into the course, I never thought that was even possible. I did not think I would be able to achieve that. I got 5s, 6s, 4s some, on some of my tests, and 
I don't think that your test marks necessarily show what you're going to get in the end. I mean, you're a busy person in the IB program. But anyway, those chemistry exams, I studied so hard. I was about to be burned out. It was the end of the exam period, but I just forced myself to commit all the way studying, you know, hour on, 50 minutes off, hour on, 50 minutes off. I would just study, study, study. And if you put in the work, you're going to be proud of yourself no matter what. If you have no regrets for what you could have done differently, it doesn't really matter the mark you get. You should be proud of yourself. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!